Okay, so what I have here is I've taken this bearing out of this connecting rod from in here, and here it is. So, if you were installing a new one, first you'd want to clean all this out with brake parts cleaner and leave no oil in there to install it. You would then, this is trying to do this one handed so I can get it on video. So you would then get that side, like put it in like this, and push it this way till it comes up to where it stops. Okay. And then with your thumb on this side, push down. until it's in place. Match up both sides. You don't want to push too much. If you went too far, you push it back. Nothing to it. Make sure the same clearance on this side as there is on this side. And don't let any oil be between this and the connecting rod. And also when you're doing this, wear some surgical gloves. This one is the old one. I still have to clean it up with brake parts cleaner and wipe it down real good with a paper towel. So um, this one doesn't matter, but I will be wearing gloves when I do the other. Again, to get it loose, you push down on this side here. It'll come up. Then you just kind of pull in, pick up at the same time, comes right out, see? Now, over to checking rings here. I have the piston rings installed now on that piston, actually all of them, they're all sitting over here in a rack. Okay, now, the way to check your piston rings. You put them in the block as shown here. I have two of them. This is the old one that I cleaned up and set in here just for reference for two reasons. Now I know my rings are correct, but if you don't know if you got the right rings, you can check them like this. You put the piston ring from the old one in one piston and you see that gap right there? You measure it. You don't want it to be over 40 for this particular engine, which is a Chevrolet. I wouldn't say over 40 for any engine. Anyhow, and if it's too close, you got to file it. You put it in a vise, and you use a file, and you file on it a little bit, and then you check it again. You can push them into the cylinder hole squarely by putting a piston in upside down, pushing it in there and be the same distance. Or you can just push it in with your fingers and measure from the piston ring to the top here where the head goes. Now, this one here measured out less than that, of course, because the other one is worn. It's a worn ring. So it's going to be spread a little more apart. Now, the way you check these is with a feeler gauge. Okay, a feeler gauge <clears throat> is a tool that has all these. It also has gaps for spark plugs on it and brass. I don't use the brass. And trying to show you with a flashlight here, the point one six. Okay, let's see here. Over here it's point two six on this side. Then it goes back over to this side. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 19, 18, 17, 16, all the way down. You put two of them together and add them together. Now, of course, you're not going to put a 25 and a 24 together, but what you will do is a 16 and a fifth, and a, and a, well, let's see. This is a 10 and a 16. That makes it 26. Okay, but you have a 26 over here, so you can do it either way you want. You can put these two together and then 
what I usually do is just fan them out and see which one fits into this ring gap here. If I can show it correctly with the flashlight. Right there. See? Whichever one fits. So, this one. And we'll try 19. 19 fits. You check your specifications and see if it's enough. If it's not enough, you take the ring out. the cylinder hole and you file the same side every time you don't file one over here one over here file the same side and there you have it and then when it's compressed it'll be closer together and you'll have the right amount of clearance. That's what you're measuring is this gap between here and here. When you put it in the cylinder hole, you have to squeeze it together by hand. And it gets closer, see? Okay. I hope that was informative. And I'll get a couple more videos up.